Welcome back in. A jury convicted the mother of a school shooter of manslaughter in the deaths of four Oxford High School Michigan students. And it's the first time a parent of a mass shooter in America has been convicted for the shooting. Jurors reached the verdict against Jennifer Crumbly Tuesday on their second day of deliberations. Her son, 15-year-old Ethan Crumbly, shot 10 students and a teacher in the November 2021 shooting at Oxford High School, killing Four. Prosecutors argued that Crumbly was grossly negligent when she did not notify the school that her family had guns at home and school officials became concerned when they found Ethan drawing violent images in class. His parents showed up to the school but did not take him home. Then later that day, he pulled one of his family's guns out of his backpack and began shooting. It was the meeting. I don't think they would have been charged but for the meeting right before that shooting happened, right? Because at that point, you're in the best position as the parent in the room. You know that he has access to a gun because you gifted it to him. Jennifer Crumbly told jurors it was her husband's job to keep track of the gun, also saying she saw no signs of distress in her son. But in Ethan's journal found by police, he wrote that he had no help from his parents for his mental health issues. Crumbly's sentencing is set for April 9th. Her husband, James, is scheduled to go to trial on similar charges next month. And to talk more about this historic case, let's bring in attorney and legal expert Amanda Riemann. Amanda, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So if you could tell us why is this case a turning point? This case is a turning point because it's the first time in U.S. history that a parent has not only been charged but convicted of a crime relating to its child. So we have had school shootings far more often than we would like to have to be discussing. But in this case, the defense attorney failed when it came to its arguments and the prosecution won. They were able to show to the jury without a beyond a reasonable doubt that she is guilty of involuntary manslaughter which means it was an unintentional killing but it's distinguishable from other forms of homicide because it doesn't require deliberation premeditation or even intent part of the point of criminal law and sometimes punishments is to deter others from committing similar crimes do you think that today's decision will help parents maybe take a little extra care or pay a little more attention to red flags that pop up uh, in their children People who are pleased with the outcome of this case would agree and say, yes, hopefully this has a chilling effect. And parents stop and think about, what can I do when my child exhibits alarming behaviors? Here, what happened was the she told the jury, in hindsight, she wouldn't have done anything differently. How appalling could that be to the jury who just had to watch videos of her son shooting and maiming students and teachers? So yes. It will have an effect on parents when they think, oh, gosh, my child is hallucinating. My child is saying the house is haunted rather than make fun of the ghosts and name them like they did here in the Crumley family. I'm going to seek help for my student when he draws pictures and says the thoughts won't stop. I'm going to pull him into an immediate psychiatric care because this is not playful. This is dangerous. Her husband's trial is coming up and there's questions of whether he is the one who purchased the gun and what his liability could be in this case, whether he's also criminally responsible. What's your read on this jury's verdict and what that would mean for his trial? And if you're his defense attorney, what's your best defense? So everyone's pointing the finger. She's saying, well, he's the one who purchased it. And then they are saying, well, you're the one who was in possession of the gun last after you took him to a shooting range. So I think that this is a strong indicator that he faces the exact same outcome that she faces because the charges are same. Four charges of involuntary manslaughter, one for each of the students that were killed. If I was the defense attorney, um, I would not be relying on her to help my kids. Case. In fact, she's probably going to plead the fifth against self-incrimination. There's also a court order that is gagging her from speaking with her husband and right. son for the past two years. They've both been in jail for um, since 2021 because they've been unable to post bond, which was $500,000 because they tried to flee. If I'm the defense attorney, 
I might start bargaining with the prosecution and see if there's some type of plea agreement that we can reach because it doesn't look well for him. Ultimately, that strategy is going to rest with that defense attorney. Yeah. But if I was in his shoes, I would say, let's try it and, and plea out so we don't have to go through this again. A friend of the show who's a law professor at Georgia State University, Anthony Michael Christ, tweeted that we should actually pause anyone who is cheering this decision and what it means because this is a rule or a legal finding that might be dangerous in the hands of certain prosecutors and it might open the doors to people using it in cases that would maybe have a disparate impact on certain populations, particularly um, low-income populations. I just wanted to get your read on that. So it's distinguishable here because of the duty of care. If I'm walking down the street, I might not have a duty to a stranger who's doing something illegal, but there is a duty of care when it comes to a parent and a child. So could prosecutors charge more parents? Sure, but could prosecutors actually get a conviction Likely not, because here the facts were so reckless, the facts were so over the top right. that just one small thing could have prevented this. So sure, could prosecutors start charging people left and right? Maybe. But to actually get to this level of a full-blown trial, a jury trial, and get a conviction, I don't see that being a slippery slope or happening. Amanda Riemann, thank you so much for joining us and your insights. Thank you, Katie. Much more to come on In the Courts when we come back. Don't go away.